economic empowerment. Is it that having money in your hands enough? No. A lot of research these days is going on. We have, we have seen that even if women have a lot of control of money that she earns, she goes out, she earns. But what about that she doesn't have a say on how to spend that money, where to spend that money. So even if you go outside, people say she's an empowered woman. She works, she earns. But what about the empowerment in her home? So it's not only merely financial empowerment. It's a multidimensional concept. When you say it's a multidimensional concept, it means that it has a number of factors and one of the uh, building blocks or the foundation is economy, definitely. So we say that we can't deny that economic empowerment is not important, but it has to be supplemented by other factors, that is political empowerment, her social empowerment, and as well as her psychological empowerment. So when you say economic empowerment, we say that yes, she starts earning, we believe that yes, she is empowered, but then a very important indicator of this woman empowerment is known as the decision making. The decision making ability. We have seen that we, although we take a number of decisions, smaller decisions in our family, you know, for example, what to cook, it's also a decision making. So we can, we can categorize decisions into smaller decisions and larger decisions. If you go to another place, like how much mobile you are. Because see, whenever we talk about empowerment, we have to just do an analysis of a woman into a number of factors. One is the decision making, one is the mobility, how far she is mobile. And in that mobility we see whether she is mobile to the institutions which are around her. A very simpler question which you can pose particularly to roller women. Uh, why I am talking about, about roller women is that they need more empowerment as compared to the urban counterparts. Because we have seen that obviously there is more education, so we expect that more empowerment to be in the urban pockets. And I think mobility within the institutions, a very simpler question which you can ask to women is, do you know what their post office is? Do you know what their police station is? What their bank is? And then you have to see whether she is mobile to all these institutions or not. So if she says, yes, I go to a bank, I have an account, this is a sign of show, a slight improvement in her uh, status in the society. She has an access to all these institutions. Then another very important thing, which is very important for you to understand this empowerment is that, what about her status in the family? Because if we see the empowerment, it has to be seen her individual first, the individual empowerment, then her empowerment vis-a-vis -vis the family, and then her empowerment vis-a-vis -vis the larger community. And then you take an individual empowerment. What are the various indicators of individual empowerment? Financial, you can say literacy, at least she should be able to have a Financial literacy, she should be able to count things that we see, whatever is around her. Then what about, is she having an awareness of all the programs around her or not? And it is, it is an individual empowerment. She doesn't need any help. Whether she, she is aware of the number of programs which are there. Because see, we... Is there is any effect of custom and agent of women power? Definitely. See, what we have seen is that See, custom and religion, if you ask people, sometimes we have a number of things in our society which neither are in our religion or neither are in our custom, like we have customary things. But that has become a habitual sort of a thing. We know some preference, we, we, we believe that there are a number of religions, we say that if you don't have a son, so your last, last rituals, they are complete. But what we have seen is that people take a number of things of their own interest from the religions when it's of their interest. For example, no religion teaches you to be uh, against girl child, is it? I think no religion on this world teaches to be or to kill a fetus. But what we have seen, we have given a name to it. Whenever you go for a sex lecture, what you say, you say that it's in our religion. Because our religion says that you should compulsorily have a son. But isn't it a misinterpretation of a custom and misinterpretation of a religion? Even though we know the custom and we see religion, every religion teaches you to give respect to women. 
So that religion definitely is empowering the woman. But it's we who are interpretation. It depends upon what interpretation you are doing. See, the number of people believe that Islam is a religion which is having an extremist approach. No, it's not at all. If you go and read, it's believing in brotherhood. But we have seen certain people who, because of their own benefit, try to gather these meanings and then do a distortion in the society. So customs and religions, they definitely are uh, institutions which empower women. But as mankind, we have seen we draw meanings from them because of our own interests. Any other And One of the biggest reasons is female PT side. Then if we take important steps to stop female PT side, then how will it help women empowerment? See, very right question and very you important question. will remain the same. See, a very important question, see, we have seen that when we talk about sex ratio, we believe that number of females born per thousand males. They've seen that Kerala right now is, uh, I think, 1058, there are more females than males. But whatever demographers are right now saying, they are saying that even if you have 950, females per thousand males then we expect it to be a good sex ratio. Sex ratio means see, it's a very important thing that you are not even given a chance to that female to live. It is one of the very important indicators of women empowerment. Because when you say women empowerment, the first very important thing is the right to life. And if you if your sex ratio of your state is very low or of your country is very low, it definitely shows that the women empowerment, it's all fashionable words. Having conferences on women, organizing women in seminars is only and simply a fashionable words. We, we, if, if your sex ratio is very low, it means it's negatively. It's negatively impacting the empowerment of the women in the society. So it means if your sex ratio is very it's a healthy trend. So we can say that if women are being treated with respect, that is why they are given the right to live. So if you have high sex ratio in your society, definitely it's a healthy sign of high empowerment in a society. Any other?